Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are you guys doing today? It's so good to see all your smiley faces as usual. I hope you're in the mood for some great entertainment, terrific conversation, live music, and so much more. We're going to be taking you out to Nevada, just west of Las Vegas, to the home and studios of John Michael Ferrari, brilliant award-winning, multi-award-winning singer, songwriter, composer, and arranger. He's got his guitar nearby. His uh, producer, Pepper J, is there as well. And we've been doing some sound checks and all kinds of cool stuff before we uh, started the show live because we like everything to sound really, really good for all of you and you and you. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We started some 630 episodes ago. They're all here for you on our YouTube channel. And thanks so much for being with us. Now, we don't consider this like an interview show, though we do interviews. We consider this really like an old school with a modern vibe entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series. We always have a good time. You're free to comment live during the show if you want to as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd like to comment live in chat. You can do that. Or you can always at any time comment on the YouTube channel uh, 24 seven, right underneath this episode, feel free and give it a, a good hearty like. We're so excited to have John here on the show again. He's been doing this work for a long, long time. We appreciate him taking time to come into our lives and sprinkle in some great conversation and chat, some terrific music as well. Thanks for all the great comments, everybody. I see them all building up. We're going to take a look at some of the comments throughout the show. Again, if you'd like to comment live, or you just want to be a part of the JMS family, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Gym Masters TV, the channel you're watching right now. We would love it. Click that notification bell also so you never miss any of the episodes because we do so many shows all the time here just for you. And while you're there, give this episode and all the episodes you like a hearty like, a thumbs up like and leave a comment for us on the YouTube channel as well. As I mentioned, Pahrump, Nevada, I tell you, that's the place where I was on a television shoot, and then I drove into Death Valley for that life-changing experience there at Death Valley. It's a really cool town uh, just west of Las Vegas, really in the desert, and that's where John is, and he absolutely loves it there. Gives him peace of mind to be able to create. He writes emotional storytelling cross-genre songs with touches of sophistication and really childlike wonder. He writes songs about his life experiences and the experiences of others. His music speaks to everybody. You can relate to the message or the story in the song. His album, Be the Smile on Your Face, was released in uh, 2020 and was recorded at Larry Baird Studios in Nashville. You can have an opportunity to listen to that uh, by going to his website. You know, after a lifetime of really performing other people's songs and at the encouragement of his music producer, Pepper J, John Michael Ferrari has written and arranged dozens of original songs across several genres as well. And we're so excited to celebrate that with you. He's won all kinds of awards like peace awards and uh, music awards that you can probably be very happy to have on your wall collection if you were in the music industry. He's won them all. Fame awards, producers choice awards. He's a prolific songwriter. Uh, he was born in Los Angeles, California. And in the early years, he spent them in uh, San Francisco and Reno and Vegas and Carson City. And at uh, age 15, well, he had an opportunity. We're going to talk about some really incredible things in his life that really inspired him and still inspires his music today from age 15 forward. Uh, John Michael writes emotional storytelling uh, alternative country pop bubblegum love and cross genre songs, as it calls it, with the touches of sophistication and or childlike wonder. And again, he writes songs about his life experiences, and it's quite unique. He's had an amazing life, and he's going to share a good deal of that uh, with us, with me, and with all of you right here. We welcome singer, songwriter, arranger, composer, extraordinaire, John Michael Ferrari, joining us live and direct from, again, Pahrump, Nevada. When I went to Pahrump, I fell in love with that uh, cute town there in the desert, just west of Vegas. John, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Very well, Jim. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I was, <laughs> I, I was asking Pepper, is he talking about me? 
Yeah, <laughs> you're talking about me. Absolutely. You've got, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and you've loved every second of it. And, you know, it, it goes way back growing up in, uh, in California and all those places, San Francisco and Reno, that you've had an opportunity to travel to. Really interesting story when you go back further that might surprise the, the audience going all the way back to like age 15 when a, a judge actually called you incorrigible, which is very hard to believe now. Tell us about the early years for you, John. Well, I, I loved growing up in San Francisco. It was an experience. You know, back then, growing up, we didn't have cell phones. And I remember getting up early in the morning, first thing, grabbing my skates, taking the streetcar all the way down to Playland at the beach. And I would be there when the janitor was still working and he'd open up the, the door for me and I'd go in and I'd start skating because I used to skate a lot. Yeah. And I would be there until 1130 at night. All day, I'd be there all day long because you know when you're skating, you you if you want to be in competition, you have to you have to do it all the time. You know, it's like yes. you're preparing to be in the Olympics, and that that's I learned my discipline, learning how to do that and dedicate myself to doing that, um, helped me out my whole life. It really, really has. And, and when did you really start to make that entree into the musical world? And would you say you were the performer before the songwriter, composer, arranger? What came first for you, John? Um, I remember uh, south of Market Street in San Francisco, my stepdad took me to a little pawn shop and we bought an F-hole guitar. Oh, yeah. And we brought that home. And I remember standing in front of the mirror trying to figure out, does it go this way? <laughs> does it go this way? And I thought, I know. I'll look at a picture of Elvis. However he's holding the guitar, that's how I'm going to hold it. And uh, so I looked at the picture, and I'm left-handed, but I... Me too. I play right-handed. <laughs> but you play right-handed, really? Yeah. Wow. I, I've always that's had because to... Because Elvis was playing it right-handed, you know? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that's really, really cool to, to be able to do that right-handed like that. <laughs> and so then my first song I learned was Tom Dooley. You know, <laughs> that was my yeah. first song. I learned how to, you know, and I kept playing it out of key. I don't know why, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I never learned it properly. <laughs> kind of like yeah. chopsticks on the piano. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was interested in music. Uh, from the moment I, I can remember, I knew every song that was on the radio. I listened to the radio all the time. Um, they were just ingrained. I, I just was familiar with everything that came out. And I was watching American Bandstand. Uh, I think there was a Dick Stewart, a KPIX, oh, a yeah. dance show in San Francisco. Sure. So between skating and music, I mean, I loved doing both. And it was something about it that I, I just could hear things in, in the music because I didn't yeah. listen just to the songs. I listened to the arrangements. The arrangements. And I loved what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. So would you say that's the, the kind of music that really took to you uh, early on? Or were you somebody who really dipped your toes in terms of appreciation uh, into a lot of different genres and styles of music? I liked everything. I like because even my songs today, I will write. I'm influenced by bubblegum songs of the 50s, 60s, you know, Build Me Up Buttercup and all those kind of things. Yes, sure. I love stage songs uh, for the stage, Broadway style songs. Um, so, I mean, I love all that kind of music. So, when I write, I incorporate all that stuff. Yeah. In, in my songs, maybe just be a little bit here, a little bit there, but there's a flavor of, of that. And I, and I think as a songwriter and arranger, it helps me because <clears throat> I'm influenced by a lot of music and many songwriters today are influenced by a certain artist. And if you're just influenced by a certain artist, you're going to be limited on what you can do. So, but if you're limited by uh, different styles of music, you know, you bring all that into what your your life story is, your life experiences. I really like that way of thinking. And that's something that's very 
prominent and dominant in your music is the sharing of your experiences and your life story. Now, the choice to go in that direction, because again, you've been interpreting the songs of others, as I said in the introduction, uh, for yeah. many, many years. And you know, you had felt it's time to tell your story and share your story. Do you find that doing it that way, it becomes more relatable and there's an organic authenticity to it that the audience relates to when they listen to John <coughs> Michael Ferrari, they know that these stories are coming from his heart and his soul and his experiences of life. I, I didn't know at an early age that I could write the way I do. Um, I just wrote things and, and then I stick them away someplace and then I'd play. But I was really immersed in playing and singing other people's songs. But I didn't realize it was teaching me structure and format and how to uh, how the songs go and knowing learning how to play them also. Uh, it gave me a clear understanding of the good structure, where the verses and where the hooks were, where the verse uh, uh, choruses are. So when I started writing my songs, I already knew that. I just instinctively knew how to put those together. And today's music, any music, is structure is really important, really important, because you have to have a goal. You have to know, like, am I just going to be a songwriter and just write songs? Or am I going to be a songwriter that's going to write uh, commercial-based songs for radio? Or for what genre are you doing it for? And so I just kind of fell into where they're very commercial. Uh, there, there's a hook, there's a bridge, memorable. I know where to put the uh, title of the song. So I understood structure, so it just kind of flowed for me. And I think that's why when I started doing songs, we got so much success so quickly because I was writing radio ready songs that were, yes. that were applicable to good structure. Now, were you self-taught or did you uh, go through all of the, the schooling and everything? Or was it something that just came naturally to you, John? Well, I, it came naturally, a lot of it. You know, I could always hear the melodies. I didn't understand what they were doing sometimes. When I'd hear the string parts. And I'd go, well, how does, how does he do that? They're, they're ascending string parts and descending string parts going up. I didn't know the terminology. Yes. But it was complicated for me i thought what there's that bass sound what, what what's he doing there yeah it wasn't until the early 80s that i got my first computer and i started sitting down and making real simple arrangements mm -hmm. that i started playing and i thought that's what that is mm. he's doing this and i could see that visually now yeah and then i i just came to me. I can understand string lines, horn parts, um, all the different elements of constructing a song musically. Mm. And I, I, it just came to me. I, I could visualize it. I could see it. So in today's music, uh, I can sit in the studio and I can put together a whole arrangement. So when Pepper and I sit in the studio, our studio yeah. here, and by the time we go to Nashville, we pretty much know what we want. When mm. we sit with the musical director, we'll go over the charts and he'll say, Where, do you want this line here? And I go, yeah, I want that in there, but I'll leave this open for the musicians to see what they can come up with. Here's what I played, but if they can come up with something a little bit better, you know, mm. that's fine too. But we pretty much know what we want when we go into a studio. It's, it's our, I'm not trying to be like anyone else. Right. I'm just being me right. and what I hear and what I want to bring in, but I'm influenced by the 50s and 60s and 70s music and the 80s. Yeah, I'm influenced by it, but I'm really being me. I'm not trying to be anybody else. So how do you, I, I mentioned it in the introduction, a little of the description of your style. How do you define the John Michael Ferrari sound and style? Well, you know, it, it's simple, but it, it's intricate. I understand chord structures. Um, I know how to come in and out of different keys, make them flow together. Um, when we were in Nashville, uh, one of the um, music arrangers said, well, you know, in country music, we really don't do that. 
You know, <laughs> you know uh, you're modulating twice here, and we don't do that in country music. And I said, okay, we'll modulate once then. You know, <laughs> we won't do the twice thing because you know he, he had good advice, but I. I just understand it. And, and I had another guitar player who uh, was, I was playing in Nashville and he said, where did you learn music theory? And I said, well, what are you talking about? He says, what you're doing, they never taught us in school. And I said, I just hear it. I just know how to do it. And I know how to go there. And he said, well, it's really interesting because I've never heard anybody do that before. Mm. And yeah. it's simple, I guess, because I know how to do it. Right. But it's not what typically the music industry does, but it's so simple that it doesn't take it out of the uh, realm of uh, being so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's subtle. There's subtle things, subtle changes uh, in modulations and, and uh, using six chords and major sevenths, how to put them in there and take them out. And uh, I was talking to Pepper today when we were recording one of my songs uh in nashville he said well you're going to a negative minor on that bridge on, on in on the chorus and i said yes i am he said well that's not usually normal what you would do and you're and you're doing a, a descending bass line coming down and i said yes i am he said though we really don't do that in country music but i'm doing it and when we finished it and he listened to it he goes ah oh, i see what you're doing now but it was subtle Mm. So having a good understanding of music and theory helps us a lot. In, in yes, the music. right. Exactly. exactly. And then that's the key to it all, because, again, then you can apply all of that to uh, to the songs, the arrangements, the composition. Do you have a, a preference? Do you love performing as the, the performer or do you really sink your teeth more into creating the compositions and the arrangements? Well, on different levels, I do different things. Now, as a guitar player, singer, I can get up and, and do one of the, the singing uh, rounds in, in Nashville where I just, I'm a singer songwriter. I come up right. there and get my guitar and I sing, sing the song and play the song. You know, here I am as a singer songwriter. Now, as an entertainer performer, it's something completely different. I don't play the guitar. I get up and I sing and I dance and I entertain the audience. Right. I do skits, do, do little things, uh, do a little stand up. That's something that's totally different from being just a singer songwriter. That's an entertainer, yeah. So when people come in and see my show for an hour and a half, they're watching <clears throat> a, a, a show. They're not just watching a singer songwriter do one song after the next song. I'm up there dancing, moving, telling my life experiences uh, growing up, how this song, I came to this particular song, the story behind it. You know, I take them on a journey. So mm -hmm. when I'm performing, I have to think about, it. am I singing, songwriting tonight, or am I doing a show? Am I performing? Yeah, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Am I playing with the band? Am I doing, am I doing TV tracks? Right, you know, TV exactly. TV tracks are uh, just your music uh, with, uh, uh, your, without the vocal on there. You're right, exactly. Did you want to uh, play something for us now? Well, everybody's all excited and they're all saying hello, or JMS Lovett. It's good to see everybody commenting along. Something you want to share with us now while we're chatting? Sure. This is a song, actually, this is off our new album. It just came out. It's called Masquerading in the Night. Um, now, they didn't, we were in the studio, they were asking, is this a country song? I said, no, it's a pop song. But I tell you what, we'll add a little slide guitar so it gives it the crossover. Now, many of our songs are pop songs, but we add the slide guitar so when the country music station hears it, they go, oh, there's a slide guitar. So, yeah, it's a country song. So, But it's not too much to take away from the pop style. So if the, it's a pop radio station, you know, they go, well, this is more of a pop song, even though there's that little slide guitar. Is that a slide guitar in there? I think so. So we're very conscious about when we do songs, what genre? Are they going to be just pop? Are they going to be country? Are they going to be crossover? It's nice to have crossover. And crossover is uh, what you're going to share with us right now? Yeah, I think so. You know, this is... Masquerading in the Night, 
it, it's uh, it's a song about you know someone alone in a room contemplating love, thinking mm -hmm. about love, thinking about uh, maybe a particular person. Why isn't that person there? When's that person going to show up? Yeah, you know, and um, I'm gonna do the acoustic version of it. But I hope you get a chance to listen to the musical arrangement we did in Nashville. What are uh, some of the other instruments that accompany the completed version? Yeah, because, you know, we love going to Nashville. Oh, yeah. And we have the keyboards and, and the guys in the studio. I mean, they're great. I mean, yeah. they're just terrific. So top, you know? top notch people. That, oh, uh, I mean, if you're going to do you. music, um, I would suggest go to Nashville. <laughs> they got There's the so best. many people are. I know people that have gone from New York and LA straight to Nashville and that's where they are doing their thing. It's, uh, and, it's become and a real hub. Over, after the song, we go over the recording process because a lot of people may not be familiar with the recording process. What it takes of, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. We entertain and we inform on the Gym Master Show Live. <laughs> All right, John. So what I'm going to do now is like an acoustic version. This is like if we were going to be in this uh, singer's songwriters round in Nashville. And, you know, you usually get there, there's three or four different people yeah. up on stage. Everybody takes their shot playing their songs, you know. Exactly. And yeah. this is what I would do as a singer songwriter. Very intimate and relaxed. Love it. How much love goes on Between the lonely night and dawn Tell me, where does love come from? Masquerading in the night of a lonesome heart Hold on tonight Hold on tonight Love is waiting, 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 waiting for you Masquerading in the night How much love comes true Before the lonely night is through Like a flame it burns and goes Masquerading in the night of a lonesome soul Hold on tonight Hold on tonight Love is waiting, waiting, waiting Waiting for you Masquerading in the night Tonight, tonight Ooh, I thought you really nice my friend that's a beautiful song when you wrote that what were you thinking about what was in what was a source of inspiration for you yeah very romantic and 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 i, and I think um most of my life you know i i i feel like i i've uh, I look at relationships and love and, you know, sometimes it, you're, you always feel like you're, you want it to happen and, and you're waiting for it. And when it does, then it goes and it comes. And I just imagine some uh, laying on the bed, looking up at the ceiling, watching that fan go around in circles and, and fantasizing a, a, a about somebody or something. And you're like you're waiting there by yourself in, in the night, waiting for love to show up. 
And does it ever show up? Because what it does, it's not what you think it is. And I try not to be predictable in my writing. And I didn't know, like I said, I, I would write things. And not only did I, I write songs, I used to write scenes for acting classes. We used to have a, an acting class in Los Angeles called the Working Actors Group. And in that class, we had very talented actors that were working actors that you really saw on TV. And each yeah. week, I would write the roundabouts that we would come in and we'd do a very fast paced reading. And I would write those. I never thought about it. You know, yeah. but I would I would write scenes and, and I, dialogue just came to me. So I learned to be unpredictable. You know, I don't write songs just because it's a rhyme. There's a rhyme here and find another rhyme that goes with it. It right. takes more work than that. Right. And there has to be something there that's a space where people can fit in their imagination and they can fill it in themselves many times. Because what I sing may not be what you hear and your interpretation will be different. Very true, what yes. I'm saying, and I leave that in there purposely so that there isn't a, a room for interpretation. I like that. That's, a, you know, it is so true because we all, you know, art, we interpret in our own different ways, whether it's a sculpture or a painting, music, whatever it may be. The artist has their vision and their mission and their thought process. And then we may gravitate to that and connect with that, but then we sort of make it our own. We, we find relatable connective tissue to the art form that brings us even to deeper levels. So I like the way that you, you present it, telling your stories and, and sharing your vision, but you allow that wiggle room for the yeah. consumer of the music to then fill in the little puzzle pieces for themselves and sort of make it their own as they interpret it, right? Yes, and you know, you could listen to the song 10 times and, and 10 times you'll find something different in that song. Like, oh my yes. gosh, I didn't know he said that or is right. that what that means? It's like listening to Bye Bye Miss American Pie. I yes. Mean, you can listen to it and every time you listen to it a hundred times, you'll find something different, something new in there. Like, oh, I didn't hear that before. Right, exactly. Right. Or when you were a kid, you first heard it and you had no idea what they were saying. And then you get right. old and you're like, so that's what that word is. <laughs> so when I write, I kind of add that in there, that little extra, but it's subtle. You know, one of my songs, I say, uh, you know, cafe terrace table for two. I'm asking a girl, would she like to come up to my room? And yes. some people are saying, well, what does that mean? Cafe terrace table for two. Right. Well, it, it refers to, uh, Van, uh, a painting by Van Gogh. Right. Instead of saying, come and see my etchings, I say, uh, Cafe Terrace, table for two. I say, come and look at my uh, my painting of uh, Van Gogh. You want to make a reservation? So yes. they're finding different ways to say things that are, I don't try to be clever, but they just come to me. Yeah, yeah. You know? They come to you, exactly. How are you inspired uh, in terms of... Uh, are there certain times of the day where you just flow with it more? I know some people we've chatted with and even friends of mine that are, that are, you know, composers and songwriters, arrangers, performers, they, they talk about different times of the day that they're more influenced. I have a friend that wakes up at two o'clock in the morning when the house is quiet and starts writing because the house is quiet. The phone's not ringing. There's no emails or texts or anything to have to respond to. So, he's inspired in the wee hours of the morning and the late evening for you. Are there times of the day that gravitate to you more? Or you gravitate to more as far as finding that inspiration? No, I compartmentalize my time. You know, like I know that we have to prepare for a show. All my time and energy goes into preparing for a show, or I know that we have to prepare for a, a studio session. All my time goes for that. When we get all that out of the way, I know I have time to, song, to sit down and songwrite. And, and I know the time I'm going to have. And, and I, I pick that time. I say, okay, it's good. Everything else is done. Today I'm doing songwriting. And I'll sit down and I'll, I'll go over some of the things that I might have written down or I'll find something I uh, might have put on tape. And I'll listen to it and see what I come up with. And uh, that's how I do it. You know, but, you know, sometimes uh, a person may say something or somebody may come into my life and affects me in a certain way. And I'll remember that. And I'll yeah. put that away on the side and I go, I'm going to come back to that. 
Yes. And when I have that time where I'm going to do my songwriting, I'll go back to that moment, like when I felt something, and I'll call it up. When I'm looking to write something, I ask the question, what do I need? I ask mm. my subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. I said, there's something here uh, that needs to be filled in. I don't know what it is. So I'm asking yeah. you, my subconscious mind, what yeah. is it that I'm looking for? Right. And I let that work for me. And then I go away. And at some point, some inspiration will pop into my head. It will, it will give me the answer like, oh, this is what you're looking for. Here it is. And when that happens, do you have to capture that moment immediately? We had, uh, and I used this reference a couple of times on the show, we had uh, Melissa Manchester on, and she said sometimes, you know, she can be walking from one room in the house to the other and something hits her as a blurp of uh, inspiration. She has to run to the piano, press record on the recorder, and start playing out through her sort of like a conduit, whatever that energy is and whatever that inspiration is, and just work it out and keep working it out, but make sure that she records it and does it soon as she's feeling it, because the longer you separate yourself from the initial source of inspiration, it starts to dilute and dissipate. Do you find when you're, wow, aha moments, you got to go and start grab the guitar or whatever and just start capturing it before it starts to fade away a little bit? Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll just, because uh, I have a guitar almost in every room. Wherever I go on the ranch or in the house, I have a guitar in that room. So I, I, I will sit down and I'll pick up the guitar and go, oh, you know, see, there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay, I got that. And I'll just put that away. And, and then, but I know today is not my songwriting day. So I'm not going to get into that. And, you know, I'll just, uh, here's a, an idea for something. And, you know, I just kind of put it aside. I, you know, like, okay, now I played it and I got it. And uh, I'll come back to it when I, when, when my, my day is for songwriting. You know? So you'll have a, yeah, you have a certain day and a feel uh, that comes and you'll know that that is the day for doing it, which is, which is really, really cool. Uh, you have something else you want to uh, share with us, John? Play for us? I don't know. I'm asking people, what, which one do you want me to? No, no, how about My Heart Can't Breathe? Oh, well, here's something that's uh, off the new album. This is a, a song called My Heart Can't Breathe. And I remember um, sitting in one of the studios on the ranch, and the door was open and looking out there, and, and, and Pepper came in, and she showed me a picture Mm. of somebody who I was very, very close to. And we were in Paris. And, um, and when I saw that picture, it just stabbed my heart yeah. because we weren't together any, anymore. And yeah. it hurt, you know, to sure. see that her and I in this picture together. Mm. And I just thought, oh, my heart can't breathe. It just took my breath away. And at that moment, I thought, you know, okay, I'm here. I'm going to write something. But today, I'm going to write something using just four chords. You know, sometimes my, uh, uh, my structure, I pretty much know what my structure is going to be. You know, uh, how many chords and where the bridge is going to be. And this one, I thought, no, today I'm going to write a real simple song called My Heart Can't Breathe and use just four chords over and over again. And, and I sat there, and as I'm doing it, uh, I'm coming up with lines, and I thought, can I do that line in there, you know? And I just kind of just sat there, and I think I wrote the song in about 45 minutes, something like that. And it, it came just from looking at that picture, and I'll do a little bit of it for you now. There'll never be an almost over you A place to go where the light shines through The problem was from the very start I was gonna love you with all my heart But it's too late, too late for me I'll do my laundry in privacy But it's too late, too late for me my pride won't hurt me because my heart can't breathe. It's too late, too late. 
There'll never be a set of words. Help me understand why it's gonna hurt. A single sigh is less than two. Me standing here without you, but it's too late, too late for me. I'll do my laundry in privacy, but it's too late, too late for me. My pride won't hurt me because my heart can't breathe. It's too late, too late. I saw your picture in a photograph. I was there when you made me laugh, but it's too late, too late for me. You should have warned me of your strategy. It's too late, too late. Ooh, yeah, yeah. It's too late, too late for me. I'll do my laundry in privacy, but it's too late too late for me my pride won't hurt because my heart can't breathe mm. that is a beautiful song my friend that is absolutely beautiful and i know you're very very proud of that song here is that album there uh that is something extra special huh well <laughs> and yeah, that's no we looked on the charts national charts number four today Number congratulations two. number four number today wow. number two yeah. number two breaking news number two congratulations so when we went to the studio you know we're, we're playing this song and and uh so the musical director says to pepper well what do you want on this song she says i want it to be a pop song i don't it's not a country song she said, you no know, she said that so we used the little electric drums at the beginning and then we added you know the other things but you know she takes really good control when we're in the studio of, you know, yeah. getting down what we wanted to do. And when I started singing, I'll do my laundry in privacy. I thought to myself, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a crazy, that's a crazy line. I was going to yeah. find something else. And I thought, no, I'm going to leave it because it has multiple meanings. Yes. You know, multiple meanings, you know, don't air your, your laundry in public, you know. Yes. And the other one is more literal. Is like you know we used to do our laundry together. Now I'll do it by myself. Now by so yourself. again, I left it open for interpretation, you know, and and then the song says, you know, you know, you should have warned me of your strategy. Well, she she had plans that she that didn't include me. Yeah, and she didn't tell me about it, mm. and that was her strategy. And and I found out later, and you know, so there's a lot of hidden meaning in in the songs. In but it's songs. still a poppy song, yeah. Four chords, and when you listen to it, you know it, it. It varies on you know how it goes constructively. Really, really fantastic. Really, really beautiful. Um, you know, going back in time a little bit, my friend. What would you say to this young lad here today? <laughs> Look at what, him. When, when was this? That's a great shot. I remember that uh, my brother was uh, in a reform school. That's where that picture was taken. And I went to go visit him uh, one weekend. And uh, uh, we were there. I guess I was with my sister. And uh, my sister took that picture. My brother and I were always in and out of trouble when we were kids. I was like a John Travolta back then. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had that sort of, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I do the dance moves, Saturday Night Fever dance moves too. <laughs> sort of right funny thing. you know when i'm on stage i dance so i'm watching a video of me and it, after all these years it occurred to me those are my skating moves but, you know when i'm because when i'm skating when you're when you're doing freestyle skating when you, you you do this you know when you you jump and you spin and you land and you do all these things like that you know so when I'm singing on stage, I'm doing all these different movements. And I'm thought, I'm skating on stage. That's what I'm doing. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> That's right. You could have tried out for the Olympics maybe too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I used to do, I mean, all the freestyle skating, the double, of, double and a half, you know, yeah. all those different things, you know. Lots of, lots but, of. But uh, yeah, that, that uh, 
physicality. Yeah. So I would want to tell that kid back then, you know, that's a very important thing because I'll tell you what I needed back then. I didn't have, I didn't have a father. Hmm. I didn't have a mentor and I was yeah. on my own. And I felt like I had no one to go to to ask questions. Mm. I would get up in the morning. I'd be gone all day. My mother never worried, never once inquired where I was going or what I was going to do. I was living in San Francisco. There were gangs. There were things, you know, I I would get involved in. Uh, I had no direction. I knew I wanted something and I wanted help. And, you know, when a kid is like that, you, you, you gravitate to whatever's easiest to get attention. And yes. sometimes being in a group of guys, you do things that you shouldn't be doing, but you're getting attention and you feel like you're a part of something. Right. right. You know, and I think that's true with all kids. And 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 I was in and out of uh, juvenile hall. I think at the first time I was in uh, San Francisco juvenile hall, I was 11 years old. And from that time until I was 15, when the judge says you're incorrigible, I was in our juvenile hall. Mm. And I was living in Reno at the time and they had a Nevada state children's home in Carson city. And he sent me there for a little over two years. And it it was an, it used to be an orphanage. Now it was a a children's uh, uh, facility, Mm -hmm. but I felt I was a part of something. I felt like there were kids like me I could relate to, you know, and there were adults there that I felt like they could be mentors. They, Mm -hmm. They could help. Yeah. And, um, but I needed guidance. And, and then when I was, you know, in my senior year, it was suggested to me that I drop out of school and join the military. Well, I was, all, I was going to be 18. And I, um, I went down to the draft board with a friend of mine and we volunteered for the draft. And so when we turned 18, they drafted us. And that was the best thing I could have done. Some structure, structure, uh, discipline, leadership. You know, I was 18, 19 years old and I was in Vietnam and they were giving me 17 man patrols Mm. where I had to go out every night and I was in charge of other people's lives. Yes. Really, literally charged of other people's lives. My decisions and what I did you know, affected uh, whether people were killed or not. Mm-hmm. And that's a, I, I liked that responsibility. I didn't shy away from it uh, mm. because I felt a sense of worth uh, yes. you know, uh, that I didn't have before in my life. Mm. Now, I should have stayed in longer. I wish I would have stayed in the military longer. I could have made a career out of it. I think I would have been happy with that. Because when I got out of the military, I had no structure again and I had no guidance again. And what did I do? I got back into trouble, Mm. you know? So military is good for people. Structure is good for people. Mentors are good for people. And we don't have enough of it today, you know? And uh, that's why Pepper and I like working with kids. We like working with kids and helping them because if you can make the mistakes and learn from it, you really learn something, you know, you do. and you do. that's how I, what did you learn about yourself? I learned to take, learn how to take my dreams and, and turn them into something, but I didn't know how to do that on my own. I, I only had the creativity. I knew I could um, have music. I wasn't good at school. I was smart, but I wasn't good because I didn't know how to apply myself. And I wish somebody would have showed me how to apply my abilities because I could have done so much better. As it turned out, I, I did very well anyways, because I learned how to take anything, any subject and learn how to uh, perfect it how to master it and and like my music or anything. I learned many things, not only music arranging, uh, video editing and and production and and all kinds of things. I learned how to do all those things. I I took up photography, learned how to be good at photography, understood the cameras and the lighting and 
when we would do uh, movies. So we would shoot movies in, in, in LA and I would do directing. And I started doing things I never realized I, I could possibly do, but it took dedication. But more than anything, it took Pepper because she allowed me to educate myself. And Pepper's very well educated. You probably, I don't know if you look at her bio. She's sure. Not, yeah. She's very well educated. Yeah, absolutely. So, and what impressed me most, I think, when I first met her, she was uh, quoting Shakespeare. And I thought, boy, anybody who knows Shakespeare, I want to know them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing is that uh, we got together is she allowed me to further my education and make mistakes and learn how to learn. And once I did that, and she taught me how to teach. I started teaching other people. And then I really started learning how to learn. Yeah. When you start teaching other people. Yes. Yeah, that's what, that's and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing, isn't it? And when you, when yeah. you get to have the opportunity to uh, inspire people and to empower others through your own life lived and your own experiences and the the wisdom gained through those experiences the good bad the ugly the happy the not so happy uh all of that i think is so incredibly important and again that's reflected in the essence of who you are and and in the music uh as well my friend and i think that's absolutely beautiful got a couple more then maybe we'll have you play something else but i got a couple more here cool shots look at this one <laughs> <laughs> I love the reactions of our guests because they never know what photos are coming up and when and where and what we do. That was a great, <laughs> that was a great reaction. Ha 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 ha. I, love that. <laughs> I remember that. I remember the day we I took remember that picture. That. That's a and plus that too. <laughs> friend Melina, she's holding our little bear. I've got a little bear there. Now, here's interesting. You want a flashback. Go back and listen to When Love Said Goodbye. This is my rendition of a, a, a 50s song that I took. And when I was playing with the band, you know, and I said, well, I want to do this song. And they go, oh, yeah, it's a really simple 50s style song. Mm -hmm. And then we started playing it and learning it. And they go, oh, it's not so simple. I mean, it is simple, but the chord structure and what you're doing in here is really intricate. I said, yeah. Yes. Right. You know, but uh, you listen to that song. I mean, it's got a lot of nice things in it. If you understand music, you'll understand what I'm doing in there. If not, you know, it's, it sounds like a 50s style song. Which we is love really, to say goodbye. Yeah, which is really cool. Love this photo too, my friend. Tell us about what was happening here. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Rosemary Richards uh, uh, with, with the sax player. What's the sax player? Rick Rossi. No, no, it wasn't Rick. Pat Sakari. Pat Sakari. Now, this is, uh, I think, was this at the Smokehouse? There's a place called the Smokehouse in Burbank, California, right across the street from uh, oh, yeah. Warner Brothers Studio. In Burbank, yes. Yeah. yeah. Famous place. It's yes. where all the big stars come in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Bob Hope, everybody. We, we would be on stage every night. Every night we'd do a show on stage. And all these people would come in and they would listen to us. And I remember one night, uh, Tommy Smothers, was it Dickie Smothers, Tommy Smothers? Oh yeah, the Smothers yeah, he's Brothers. He's standing on the st side of the stage and he's looking at me and he, <laughs> and he says, can I come on stage? Can I come on stage? Yeah. yeah. And, and then I said, well, come on, come on, come on. So he gets on stage and he does his impression of Johnny Carson. Oh, which is spot on, isn't it? It is it spot is. on. That, because that he had just come from doing the Johnny Carson show. Yes. And he did that routine that day when he and when he came there you know and that was a great experience learning how to every night do a show entertain the people but here's the difference back then when i was playing the smokehouse i was doing cover songs i was writing some songs but i was doing cover songs if you're going to succeed in this business you've got to learn how to do your own songs because all those years i made a good living but I went as high as I could go doing cover songs. I mean, I would, no matter where we played or where we go, uh, we would do a, a, a show, a 90-minute show. Sometimes we do a four-hour show. 
Um, but I was just doing cover songs, anything from Sinatra, Tony Bennett, uh, rock and roll songs, all the old 50s. I mean, I knew them all. I knew how to do all the songs. Show tunes, West Side Story, Fiddler on the Roof. I mean, I knew all these songs. I mean, I would do them. Um, but had I started writing and doing my own songs and going to Nashville back then, my career would have probably taken off sooner. <coughs> like yeah. taking off now. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the trick is learning, yeah. <coughs> learning how to do your own. This is water. Yeah. Yeah, take a glass. Uh, we're actually really happy to have John here because you may remember he was going to be with us last week, but uh, he was, you know, getting over, of all things, the COVID. Yeah. And uh, we're so glad, you know, the remnants still there, but we're so glad that you're you're feeling much, much better. And, thank you. Thank you. You know, nursing back to good health. Absolutely. So, and, you know, doing, learning my craft today, it's difficult for young artists to go out and do their craft and get paid. Yes. We were getting paid, you know, and I started making a living early, early on back in the seventies. My rent was a uh, uh, $120 a month. I was making anywhere from $150 a night to $300 a night. One back then, back then, so, which was worth, yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, I was making a living doing yeah. cover songs. I mean, I was playing steak houses. I was yeah. doing Jim Croce, Cat Stevens. You uh, know, I, yeah. I knew all those songs. I'd be playing in a steak bar. Plus that, I'm getting paid and I'm getting tips. You On know? top of it. <laughs> so I had to make a couple hundred dollars in tips. So I'm, yeah. I'm walking out sometimes over $400 a night. Not and, bad. you know, I was very fortunate that I could make a living learning my craft because I would, I worked for far West services in, mm -hmm. in Orange County, uh, Chris Babbitt, he used to, he did the hiring and, um, and he, they had all the different, uh, uh, steakhouses all over Orange County, Santa yeah. Ana. And I would play in them all. I mean, I'd be like four weeks here and four weeks there, three weeks here. And each time, you would perfect your show, perfect it, perfect it, perfect it, perfect it, get better and learn your songs, learn how to get up in front of an audience and learn how to speak and talk yes. to the audience. You don't have to be funny. No. Right. And, and as any standard comic will tell you or anybody, never try to be funny. If you're, if you're standing in front of an audience and, and something pops in your head and you think, oh, this is going to be funny and you say it, it's going to bomb. Mm -hmm. It don't work that way. If it pops into your head, you say it, boom, it, it, it just comes out. People react to it. Exactly right. Exactly. Yes. Now, go if with, you have a routine, you, you know, have routine. you have a certain routine where you worked out, you know, you're going to get a laugh. You throw those yeah. in there. That's good, too. That's part of building a routine, building, you know, what That's you're right. doing. That's and right. We don't have that today for young people because, uh, you know, it's nice to turn what we do into a paycheck. And unfortunately, yeah. today, it's difficult for young artists to turn what they do into a paycheck. Yes, it is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, the whole game has changed in so many different ways. Uh, it's really, really extraordinary. Um, got some more cool photos here. Look at this one. Oh, settle the Saddle spurs. spurs. Okay. 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 You're going to do this. Okay. Paper, come here. Uh, uh, now that's me, and left is, is our drummer, Dr. John Nowens. He delivers babies. He delivers babies. He delivers babies. Uh, wow. On the other side of me is Dr. Bruce Topper. Dr. Bruce Topper. Yeah, he's, a radiologist. he's a radiologist. He plays the keyboards. He wow. plays the keyboards. Next to him is David, David Miller. He's a pathologist. He's a pathologist. He plays bass. And, and the guitar player is not there. And the guitar player is not there, right there. Now. That John Nolan's on the left of me wearing the blue shirt. He he uh, he's a, a six degree karate teacher. Wow! And 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 stay Euro, friends with him. Huh? <laughs> stay yeah, friends so with him. Euro, you know, I'd run into him at the karate tournaments uh, in, in in Vegas, and and he go, John, we all we get together. I play drums, and some of my buddies, we you know, we're good. And I say, okay, well, maybe someday we'll do that. Someday we'll do that. 
And finally, another year went by, and he said, no, yeah. we got to get together. And I told Pepper, okay, let's get together and see what these guys can do. Yeah. They were terrific. Yeah. And they were terrific. And we started playing. And, and we would do things in Vegas, shows, and they could only work on the weekends because of full-time doctors. Full-time doctors. Yeah. That and is really cool. So when the COVID hit, you know, everything kind of backed off. But uh, they, they were terrific. And John Owens and I still uh, hang out together and rehearse together. And, and we're going to start putting back some shows now together again. That is and, awesome. And, and do that. That is fantastic. That is really, really cool. Got another great shot here, too. Look at that one. Yeah, that's them. That's at the ranch. That's, that's Katie at the ranch. Jensen. Now, Katie Jensen uh, she lives in Vegas. We used to, uh, 20 some years ago, we were playing together when she was living mm. in LA. Yeah. You know? That's I mean, at your ranch there in Pahrump? Yeah. Yeah. That's the ranch behind us. Pahrump is really a, a very cool place. It's just a very cool unique place isn't it it is i would have never become the writer that i i am today had we not moved out of la mm. and moved into the because the serenity the energy people come here and they feel it immediately as soon as they drive onto the property yeah. they feel like yeah. oh my gosh yeah and a lot of it has to do with pepper because she designed everything we have you know a nice swimming pool area uh spa you know we have a, a basketball court we have you know we have this great 3,000 foot Quonset hut which is fixed like, like a stage uh, it's like a showroom this is where I practice my shows mm. you know and and when, when I we say have practice, you come back we're going to do the show on location there <laughs> yeah <laughs> it sounds well, yeah, awesome we just had a big uh, We've done many, many uh, parties, and and uh, we just did a what was that thing we just did? Album, an album release party. We did an album release party here a couple of weeks ago. Um, That's awesome. When I say I have it set up behind me, you kind of see the stage and the drums and things. Yes. You have all the lights. When I practice by myself in here, I do it as though I am doing a real show. I do it. From a scale from one to ten, I do an eight, sometimes a nine. I mean, I get out there, I practice it, I do my songs, I do my dance routines over and over again. I mean, a lot of people say, well, I, I'll rehearse, but I'll, I don't give it my all until I get on stage. Yeah. I don't do that. When yeah. I rehearse, I give it my all. I want to know what it's going to feel like. I want to know what my delivery is going to feel like. Mm -hmm. so when I go someplace and I'm performing, I've already done in. it. So You're many, all in. And I feel comfortable and I got it down. Because the most important down. thing is, as an entertainer is to make it look easy. Don't make it look tough. Don't Absolutely. make it look difficult. We talk about that a lot on the show here. It's to make it look easy because you want to, in any of our respective industries, we want to take the uh, angst of the day away from the those folks who are wanting to be entertained and inspired we want them to forget their troubles and and be swept away by what it is we are all doing so right it's to make it look easy but in order to make it look easy there's a lot of blood sweat and tears and a lot of work behind the scenes and years put in to make it look so effortless and easy right that's the challenge yeah. of it all Absolutely. You know, and, and, you know, I practice dance little routines and uh, I was doing a Fred Astaire thing, trying to show them a little dance with a Fred Astaire, like a song that I had written. And I wasn't getting it. So I had to go back, listen, watch Fred Astaire, how he moves and everything. And then I come back and I practice it, practice it. And I throw it in. It's not perfect, but it, it's getting better. But, you know, it, it's fun. It, you know, you learn your craft but you, and, you, and you try to throw it in the show. And make it where it's, <coughs> even if it's not perfect, it's fun. Yeah. Enjoy it. Exactly. You know, my story, right. you know, they vary, <coughs> excuse me, they vary a little bit. But the, the truth is there in, in my stories. And, and I, the idea is I, I, I want to make people smile. And I have a saying, and, and I came up with this saying years ago, there's never a stranger in the audience. Somebody asked me one time, I was playing in South Carolina. They said, well, how do you know all these people in the, in the, you know, when you come out and perform? 
you know everybody. I said, no, I don't know anybody. But when I come out, I look at people, I point at them, and I wave yes. at them. Oh, people think I know all these people. Yes, but I treat right. them like they're not a stranger. If you right. people treat them like a stranger, then they're going to be a stranger. You treat them like you're, you're, they're your friends, they'll react to you that way. So when I come out and I perform, I treat yeah. everybody like they are my friends. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Absolutely. Was well, there another song you wanted to share with us, my friend? They're loving this. They're loving this. <coughs> You're up to it. Oh, yeah. Totally up to you. Don't feel any pressure. Totally up to you. Okay. I'm going to do a song for you that's. Uh, uh, Bunny Barnes is, is watching, and Bunny Barnes says, in the happy business. I love that. Great name, Bunny Barnes. I love that. Welcome, Bunny, to the Gym Master Show Live. She goes in the happy business. That's what it is, doing this kind of work, right? Being in the happy business, John. It is. You know, being an artist, is, I feel a kinship with other artists. I feel we're, yes. we're special. We're, we've been given a gift to go out yeah. and share what we have with the, with the world. You know, yes. we can make ourselves happy or happier. You know, mm -hmm. just by picking up a guitar, writing a song, doing something and making people smile. You know, when people come in and they lay down money to see a show. It, it's it's not just like going up there and singing a song. I'm a singer songwriter and here's my song for tonight. People come down and they spend 60 bucks, 70 bucks for a, an evening, you know, for a dinner show. They expect to see something. Yeah, They come in at maybe a level three or four from their day. When you do a show, they got to leave at a level seven, eight, nine. Absolutely. And if you can make that happen for them, they become addicted to your shows. And, and when you perform, they want to come back because they know that when they leave, they're going to be emotionally lifted to a certain level. That's why we love doing uh, shows or watching a good movie, because when we do that, we're we're lifting our spirits up to a certain level. Yes. Life. Yes. I love that way of thinking. That's how I approach everything that I do in my career in television, radio, film, and stage. It, it, it's that goal. It's to uh, do what you do and have fun doing it. Uh, sometimes there's serious moments. Sometimes there's uh, really poignant, deep moments. That's part of it all, which is beautiful. But when you leave refreshed when I'm refreshed yeah. like wow that was awesome and then the folks on the receiving end of that energy say wow that was awesome and we feel good and we can't wait to gather again to feel like that again that's really a spectacular feeling isn't it yeah because they want to bring their friends because right. I'm saying hey, you got to see the this. Word. this guy or you know, you got to go. I'm. A, you got to see this movie. It's really good. You know, we we do that, and we feel yeah. like I want to introduce you to something that you may not have experienced before. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So you know, as an entertainer, uh, you got to reach down, and, and artists have to remember this. You got to reach down and pull out something that's down there. It's in us. It's in everybody. Now, are are you going to do it? Are you going to reach down and bring it to the surface? Are you going to share it with the world? Uh, because if you're going to move people, you've got to move yourself. You've got to bring yourself up to move other people. You know, that's, that's right. That's yeah. right. Because they can they can tell when you're not authentic. Now more than ever, I think people can really tell when you're not being authentic. You're not really you, uh, or you're just not a hundred percent. They can really uh, sniff that out. So you know. Be all in if you're going to do it and all the toil it takes, blood, sweat, and yeah. tears. Give it your best if shot. If you, have, for you. if you have a lot of energy, you'll attract people. Yes. Not only will you attract people, you'll attract the dreams that you think about. If you yes. have, you raise your vibration, yes. you're going to attract people. But all right. the things that you think about, you're going to attract those things too. You have dreams, ambitions, and things you want to do, and, and you raise your vibrations and you have that in your mind, you will attract those things. And yes. alternatively, if you if you have bad thoughts and bad things, bad. you will attract those things as well. Yes, that is so true. That law of attraction is a real thing. Absolutely. And as we say, each day is a gift and a blessing and an opportunity to inspire. 
and be inspired. That's one of our master's mantras. Uh, yeah. Take it away, my friend. You got that. Beautiful. Uh, tell us about the guitar. We always ask, we like to ask the guests about the instrument. Uh, tell us about that special guitar you have there. This guitar. It was a gift. Uh, a friend of ours, he was a retired detective. He came over the ranch and he had a guitar case and he sat down and he pulled out the guitar. He goes, John, here, it's yours. I go, really? I go, yeah. And, uh, and uh, he gave it to me. It was just you know, a nice gift. What I, a I gift. Yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, I have another guitar. I have several guitars. Uh, I have one that I got in back in 1974. I still have it today. It's the Glenn Campbell guitar. I, oh, I love playing the nylon string guitar. Um, you, know, you know who we had on the show? We had Debbie Campbell on the show, his daughter. Did you have? Oh, did you? Did she, you? She was, she's fabulous. Really beautiful spirit inside and out. Yeah. Yeah. I met Glenn Campbell a did couple you? times. Yeah, and uh, I brought him some of my songs. He was playing at he's playing at uh, uh, the International Hotel in Vegas. Uh, I don't know what he thought. They were the worst songs. <laughs> 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 Thinking back, <coughs> my songs that I wrote and gave to him, he, he took them and he listened to them. Yes, but they, they in retrospect, they were terrible. They were terrible songs, you know. But like, he was I kind. I can imagine him listening to like, who is this guy? Don't <laughs> let him near me, you know. <laughs> oh, gee. That is funny. All right, my friend. Take it away. More music here on the Jim Master Show live with John Michael. Ferrari. So this is a song. It's called, How You Doing? How Am I Doing? So I know this guy. And I he has always looking for the best looking girls and and every time he sees a girl you know he'll walk up to them and go hey how you doing you know and they just the women just fall in love with him and, he, and i don't know exactly what he's saying to the girl but i can only imagine the how the conversation goes and so i i kind of wrote the song about what i think the conversation might be about and it's called how you doing or how am i doing how we doing? I don't know. How we doing? But I love you that. know who used to say that? Uh, Mayor Ed Koch in New York City. That was one of his slogans. He would ask everybody, how am I doing? <laughs> how am I doing? How are you how doing? doing? Hey, how I'm you, doing. We're all how doing. doing. Okay. <laughs> it's We're funny because when tonight. Doing that, you know, a lot of the kids around here, when they walk in, they go, hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm how doing, you doing? You know? That's it. <laughs> well, we're doing great tonight with you as our guest, my friend. So here's the song. How you doing? Seems like you're doing fine. How's your love light? Anyone special in mind? If there's anything that you need, who set your heart free? Could I be the one to hold you tonight? Born to take a chance. Fit in romance on this full moon tonight. No one here will know after the show what we do tonight. Oh, what a night! Such a beautiful night, a beautiful you. How am I doing? Oh, I guess I'm doing fine. How's my love life? No one special in mine. But if I'm wavering any doubt and I can't figure things out, could I be the one to hold you tonight? Wanna take a chance, 
Fitting romance on this full moon tonight No one here will know After the show what we do tonight Oh, what a night Such a beautiful night A beautiful you All the guys wish that you were the day Oh, before it gets too late Could I be the one to hold you tonight? Could I be the one to hold you tonight? How we do it doing just fine what a great song really fantastic <laughs> i love all these different styles that we're hearing too and merlin and canada are saying really like this song lots of claps and hearts and and bunny uh is saying uh nice lyrics absolutely and throws in a nice uh, heart there as well and Thank i you. love it all great stuff and maureen and, you know, saying, a lot of it is so it's different you know so take it from the guy who says that and, you know, there's another scene in there, you know, backstage, you know, when you're, you're a performer, you always see these, you know, beautiful looking women backstage. And, and I, I just visualized all that stuff, you know, visualized, you visualized me, me yeah. walking up to somebody and say, hey, how you doing? You're trying to get a conversation going with some young lady, you know. Yeah. I Very. use all the imagery. It's all about imagery, you know. Yes, absolutely. We call that lovity on the Gym Master yeah. Show Live. Uh, I want to show some more cool shots here, too, while we're weaving this into the conversation with the music. And I hope everybody's having a great time. If you are, gang, thanks so much. We love having all of you here. Don't forget, while you're here, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. We would love it. Share the channel. Get on the top of Mount Everest and tell everybody about the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And give this episode a thumbs up like on our YouTube channel and leave a comment for us too if you enjoy this episode and all the episodes of our series. We work hard to uh, put smiles on your faces all the time here at the Gym Master Show Live. Speaking of smiles, this is a great shot we came across, John. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. that that's uh, uh, Al, Al Boyd. He sings with the Drifters and the OJs. Uh, who is it? Tia Simone. Tia Simone, that's right. Uh, and Russell Wall. And Russell Wall sings with the Drifters and the OJs and all those guys. So they, 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 they when we were in Bay, uh, uh, LA, they would come over to the house and, and, and sometimes bring over the other guys. And we would sing all these songs. They'd come perform with me too. And I would got, I, I'm singing these songs and I'm thinking, I got the Drifters band, you guys, behind me. They're singing. Singing back up for me. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Oh, dance. They're, they're doing the dance stuff and everything. And, you know, just uh, we were very, very fortunate <coughs> living in L.A. because we had access to a lot of people, a lot of friends and <coughs> musicians. And it's mm. really, really a wonderful thing to have that. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And everybody stays connected, which I think is a, a beautiful thing. Here's another great shot, too. Tell us about this. Oh, that's here in Pahrump, isn't it? Where's that? Where's that? At, uh... That's the old Sullivan's Pub. Oh, is that Sullivan's Pub? Yeah, it's a little pub down the street. You know, sometimes we just play uh, local little places. And I'll just yeah. go in with just me. Isn't that nice to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we tell our friends and everybody just shows up and and we just have a nice time. And you know, I do a guitar thing. So sometimes I just to, mm. it's just like this, me and the guitar, and I do the, my stories and I talk and, and, you do and sometimes thing. I'll invite people uh, to sing up back up or uh, my Very friend down cool. there next to me on the left, he plays bass. I say, Go have your bass, come on stage and play with me. You know, or say, oh, yeah, you're, you know my song. Come on and sing harmony with me. I love oh, yeah. getting people involved. You know, if oh, I see them yes. out in the audience, I give them on stage. Say, Come on and sing with me. Or let's do this. Or, you know, I'm doing this show, uh, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks in Vegas. You want to come on stage and sing with me? They go, are you yeah. serious? I said, no. Yeah, no, yeah they're shocked. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I worked with this one little girl. 
And, and she says, but I don't sing on key. I said, listen, it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. I said, you are so adorable. People yes. are going to love you. She got up there and she was so good. She didn't sing on key all the time, but she was so cute and so adorable. She got a standing ovation. People love awesome. her. They loved you know, her. It's about the audience, about giving the audience something that, that's fun and enjoyable. And Absolutely. giving people experience like, well, who else would give you a chance to get on a Vegas stage and do things? Right. Absolutely. You know? I, I agree. It's all about that connection that uh, is made. Uh, Maggie Perry has been with us tonight, too. You know Maggie, of course. And uh, she's, Hi, been Maggie. Saying, she's been saying hello to you and to, to Pepper uh, as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she's been a guest on our show uh, she's twice. Terrific. She's terrific. Yeah, she's wonderful. We we love when Maggie is uh, with us, and we'll have her back again uh, soon. She was just on recently, actually, for a uh, holiday music show that we did, which was a lot of fun as well. Here's another great shot, my friend. Oh, Dave Anderson. Okay, you're you're in Nashville, right? Us here? Uh, no, you. Uh, you're Jim. Are you in Nashville? No, no, no. We're here on the East Coast. We are okay. here uh, in the New York area. Okay, well, that's... We have, we have lots of snow on the ground. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's a cat behind you. Dave a cat Anderson. just jumped up on the he, stage. He is considered the ambassador uh, of Nashville. Dave. The ambassador of Nashville. Right here, yeah. 30 years ago, even longer, we used to play in uh, uh, L.A., we were like the Everly Brothers. We would do oh, Everly boy. Brothers songs. We do all kinds of songs. We play night after night all these different clubs. And then when then they said, "I'm going to Nashville. I'm moving to Nashville." And you know, he great success, great guitar player. He's the ambassador to Nashville music city. Mm. Um, and then one way I go to Nashville, we get together and hang out. You know, Very it's cool. so nice. Really, really cool. There's a feline that jumped up on the stage behind you, which is kind of cool. We see, we see. Who's that behind you on the left of you? Where's that? Oh, is that, what's that, paint? The other side. Oh, the other side. Yeah, we have uh, seven cats. <laughs> the audience, they love yeah, seven when they cats. see it. Yeah, they love when they see an animal jump on. The... <laughs> two, chi <coughs> two chickens. Uh, 14, uh, no, 14 chickens, yes. two peacocks, two, peacocks right. two tortoises, two, tortoises two, dogs. two dogs, four goats. Yeah. We tore down the horse table. Pepper J, Pepper J is something else. She's yeah. got it all down. She's got it all down. She's amazing. And, you know, she's got her greenhouse. She's got to, you know, we enjoy the ranch and we enjoy sharing it with yes. people. We have people that come over. Uh, yeah. Kids and, and wonderful oh family. yeah it sounds like it's absolutely fantastic uh well, you, you probably even something? have a partridge in the pear tree i don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i like to bring up something that's coming up at the 20 the 25th of this month fabulous 25th of february of february yes uh, got we about, were uh, asked to do a metaverse concert virtual reality, virtual reality concert now, you know, this whole metaverse is just taking off. I don't know how much you know about it, Jim, but all this stuff that's taking off. My uh, nephew is, is very big in artificial intelligence. He's, he's almost at genius level with it. He's very involved in that world. And this whole thing of virtual reality, artificial intelligence, all of it is just really extraordinary, isn't it? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So this company that does all this metaverse stuff, they con contacted us and they came to us <coughs> and they said, <coughs> we'd like John to do a, a metaverse concert. <coughs> Want to grab some water? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I know when they called you, you got all choked up. <laughs> yeah. I'd use some water. Thing. Yeah. So, and, and Pepper said, well, what do you need? They said, well, we need you to perform your show, an hour and a half show in front of a green screen, you know, but it has to be professionally done green screen. They said, no problem, you know. So we went into Vegas and we, uh, there's a studio there with the, all the cameras and all that stuff and the lights. And we did an hour and a half show, almost hour and a half show, my show. And they turned me into an avatar 
and uh, I, we saw portions of it, but it's it's uh, really very cool, isn't it? Because they turned me into this avatar, and all these people they come in, and if, if you have your headset, you can come in and be a part of the concert. Yes, it's, it's amazing, and, and we were surprised because out of our all the artists out there, they asked me to do it. You know, it's like wow. It, it's funny how success works. You know, uh, we struggle, we struggle, and we do all right, and and you do some things right, and you think if I keep doing these things right, you know, it'll build. And you know, we're very fortunate. We we moved to Pahrump to to retire. Little did we know that after going to Nashville and doing our songs, that we were going to get radio play. We didn't know. We didn't know that it was going to happen. And all these things started happening. And usually, if you get one song that hits, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Off our first album, how many songs? We six. We had eight songs. Eight out of our eight songs out of our first album hit the charts. Eight. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Hmm. Who would have thought? Yeah. And then off this new album, already uh, first one, <coughs> number four. <coughs> yeah. So it, it's there's amazing. the charts, <laughs> the actual charts right there. Yeah. What, what is, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and several it, it, awards. Here's the thing that we love. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look at these awards you've been getting. I mean, congratulations. Uh, Las Vegas Producers Choice Honors, Red Carpet Press Event. Uh, that's fantastic, huh? Congratulations yeah, here, on that. Yeah. And look at Thank this. You. Here's the thing about that. Years ago, we were at the LA Music Awards, you know, covering it because we used to cover shows and we were in LA. And we were watching all the uh, rock stars and people running up and down the, you know, the red carpet and doing interviews. And Pepper turned to me. She said, one day they'll be giving you an award. And I said, for what? I said, why would they give me a word? I tell, you know, um, and who would have thought a few years from the, in the future, <coughs> I'm getting, they're giving me an award. You know, I, it's just funny how things <coughs> happen that way. Yes. And, it's amazing but, how, yeah. Yeah. And, and and you know once you get one you start getting recognition and, you and get then recognition and it, it kind of builds but you need a good team you got to yes. have a good team you know the team isn't just me it's just pepper it's all the musicians all you know your uh program uh, uh directors at the, at the studio your larry yes. beers uh i mean the, the engineers i mean it's it's mm -hmm. a team they all come together and they help put this thing together and Gee whiz, it's just a, an amazing thing. There we are, yeah. Um, you and Pepper, yeah. Yeah. I got the one with the award shows. And you know, everybody yeah, you has their own journey in your hand. Yeah. on how to get there. You know, and yes. everybody, everybody has takes their own road. Mm -hmm. What works for one person may not work for somebody else, but you, exactly you find what right. works for you. And hopefully you can find somebody to help you, <coughs> give a helping, helping hand. <coughs> And there's our band again. <coughs> oh, no, no, what's this? That's our band in Nashville. That's our band in Nashville. That's Very the scoreboard. Cool. The scoreboard, look at that, yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, uh, so uh, two things I'd like to get to. Uh, one thing, uh, again, is like we're doing this uh, virtual reality concert, and if people are out there and they want to sign up, where do they go for that? They go to your website? Sansar, or go to our website, right? Sansar.com. Sansar.com. How do you spell that? S-A-N-S-A-R. S-A-N-S-A-R. Sansar.com. It should be up in a couple of days. Tickets are $25, dollars Is this look, uh, this look right on the screen? Uh, Sansar.com. Sansar .com. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah. they go there. Great. I remember that picture. That's me singing. I wrote a song called Last Song of the Show. Years ago, I, I heard a song by Peter Allen. A lot of you may not know who Peter Allen is. Oh, yes. 
Yeah. He wrote a song once before I go. Yeah. I want you to know. We it's lost a closing him Broadway too. show song. Yeah, we lost him too early. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that's how I like to perform. The way he performs, I love that. And and I thought one day I'm going to write a song, Broadway closing song. And I wrote one called the last song of the show. It's on our new album coming up. And when you hear it, it's a, it's a show tune. Just released. Just released, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's me mm -hmm. singing that song there. I, as I got an award, I got up and I sang last song of the show. You know, it, I, it's amazing to me sometimes when I'm singing the songs, I think it's amazing, you know, that we came up with this and we have this. And. And it really turned it into something that's real. There's the guys in the band again. <laughs> yeah, another great shot. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing, here's a cute story. We've been asked to come to uh, Las Vegas. Oh, that's uh, Eva. Is that Eva? Yes, yeah, one of your students. Yeah, the, the cute little girl you know, brought to us. And she's, you know, she sings and does her little thing, plays the ukulele. And I'm, she's one of them invited. So you want to come on stage and play uh, in Vegas? And she goes, are you serious? I said, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so she was adorable. She came in a couple of times. She played one song. And then another time she played two songs. You know? Wow. But she got the chance to come on stage and play with us. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Uh -huh. <laughs> we did our we research. Did <laughs> we, did, we did our homework. I know. Wow, you know, that's terrific. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what ever happened to that guitar, but you know. 1966. Yeah, wow. I wrote a song called Dust Off back then. Hmm. That's and, incredible. Um, that's incredible. The, the, the longevity of the career that's resilience, you know, that's uh, resilience personified, you know. <laughs> I have uh, <laughs> there's Stan, that, there's that Stan Wiz again. painted that for me. That's laugh. me. <laughs> That's who you see when you walk, come to the ranch, you know. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey, how you doing? That's a great laugh you've got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. If you ever come to the ranch, you'll love it. You know? That's when we were in Paris. Mm. Um, <coughs> Pepper took that picture. <coughs> so beautiful. That was uh, written for... Uh, my little girl, <coughs> yeah, um, who grew up to be a teenager, who you know. grew up to be a teenager, absolutely. Um, keep falling all over myself. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because we were recording that song, and the uh, uh, musical director says, John, I said, you, he, you got an extra verse here, you got to drop it out. And I said, But I love the verse. He says, Yeah, but it doesn't meet the structure. And we dropped it out, you know, uh, but I always miss it. But, you know, sometimes you, you, when you're writing the structure, you, you got it right. Keep true to the structure. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Exactly. True to form, true to form. That's Be our goal. Smile. Be the Obviously. smile on your face. That's our, last album. that's our last album. Be the smile on your face. Pepper says to me one day, she says, go get cleaned up. We need a picture for the album. You live on a ranch, you know, you got hay all over you. you got <laughs> oh, come on. I said, I, I don't, can you find a picture? And she said, okay, I'll find a picture. And she, and she pulled out that one and said, what about this one? I said, perfect. That is it. Looks it. like I go to smiling. Won AAA album of the year. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, it won uh, AAA album. <laughs> AAA album of the year. Triple A album, album, album of the year. Of that particular one. Fantastic. So... <coughs> <coughs> run away. So run away to Alaska. Yeah. So I'm playing at the Mount Charleston Lodge here, you know, years ago. And uh, as I'm playing, this beautiful young lady walks in the door. She's got an entourage of people with her. And I thought, she's got to be a movie star. I mean, she's just knocked out, you know, striking. So I'm playing my songs and I'm thinking, I'm gonna go over and talk to her when I get off stage. So I finish my song and I tell everybody, I'm gonna be right back. So I walked over to her table where she's sitting with all her friends and they look up at me and I don't know where the line came from. I said, let's run away to Alaska and tell everyone we moved to Nebraska. Nobody laughed. 
they just looked at me. And she said, would you like to sit down? And I thought, oh my gosh. And uh, I did, we started a <coughs> conversation <coughs> and we ended up becoming friends. Yeah. But no one embarrassed by that line. <coughs> Absolutely, yeah. I was so embarrassed by that line. I thought I'll just turn it into a song. Just so I went home and I wrote a song. Let's run away to Alaska. Tell everyone we moved to Nebraska. It turned out to be a good song, but it was a terrible <laughs> pickup line. But uh, <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> so yeah, I was uh, asked to come to the uh, was it the Oscars? Uh, the tribute to the Oscars. Tribute to the Oscars. The tribute to the Oscars. Yeah. Oscar night. Tribute to the Oscars at the Hilton, Beverly Hilton Hotel. Oh, and, beautiful place. Yes. And uh, Pepper said, they asked you to, if you would come and, and perform. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, wow. I mean, why not? You know, sure. What an honor. So, yeah. you know, we drive in Beverly Hills and get our room and, and uh, at the hotel and and they said, we had to go down to rehearsal because they get the sound, that's check. sound check and everything. And I said, oh, sound okay. Check. Yeah. So I get me and my guitar and I walk up to the sound guy and he's standing on the side of the stage. And he looks around and he goes, where's your band? I said, I don't got a band. I said, it's just me. He said, you don't have a band? I said, no, it's just me. It's and me. he says, oh, okay. And so he said, well, get on stage and I'll sound check you. And he gave me such a terrific sound check. I mean, it was just like that. that you know, it didn't take long. I sang my song and things like that. And um, and, and then that was it. And I come back later on that night, you know, all dressed up and tuxedo and everything, you know, you know the, the whole big thing in, in the main showroom. And in between the awards, they, they have entertainment that comes on. And they give the award, give the award, and then they introduced me and I came on and I did my song like a rock and roll band and it sounded beautiful with the sound check. It's just me and the guitar. Just you and the guitar. Yeah. And, and then I look over to the left and I see these women walking my way, carrying this huge trophy. And I'm thinking, what is that? What is this? I didn't know they were awarding me an award for best peace song of the year. Had no idea. I mean, I was just floored, fabricated, just like, oh my gosh. And and they came over and they staged and they gave it to me. And, and I looked at Pepper and I said, wow. I mean, how can these things ever happen? How, isn't it just amazing? You just never know. You just never know, right? Isn't that incredible? I mean, does, that must inspire you to just keep doing what you're doing, doesn't it? it? It makes me so appreciative. You know, one thing yeah. I do almost every day at the ranch uh, is my walk as the sun goes down over the mountain. You know, uh, uh, you know, and I know pretty much every day it's going to be a, a, like today is going to be at five seventeen. You know, or it's at seven oh seven or eight oh three. I pretty much know what time the sun's going to go behind that mountain yes. the last thing i do i like to do every day is to be out there walking and i look up and i say god thank you for all the wonderful gifts and things that you brought into my life that's my at the end of the day that's what i say to the sun to, to god because i really feel that and i think when we give appreciation you know you're blessed with more things in your life if you're not giving appreciation and giving thanks, then how can you expect more? You not only expect anything, but by giving thanks and appreciation to everything that's around me, it could be the smallest thing. Yes. I, I will stop and I will say, thank you, God, for that, for that little thing right there, whatever it is, you know, how it affects me. If I see a leaf fall and it affects me in, in a way, I say, thank you. Thank you for in that. The same way. Yeah. Yeah. You're so you're very, very visual and you observe everything and you soak it all up it really moves you and you feel you feel a lot you feel things deeply kinetically yes absolutely yeah you know you learn how to tap into the, that that magical place 
Yes. And if you really want to tap into it, you have to be appreciative and, and be in a good state of, uh, of emotional mind. Mm-hmm. You know, to tap Mindfulness. Into right. Magic. Because mm-hmm. when you tap into it, it's there. It, it just comes to you. Like I said, I don't try to be clever with lyrics. And many times I can't come up with things. And I ask the question, what do I need? And an answer will come to me. And it'll just sit in my head. Or like here, it's like God just says, here, use this. And it just comes. Like, oh my gosh. Right. Just there it is, right? That and it's, that's amazing when that happens. It's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, what are what are some things that you have on the bucket list that are coming up and or things that you still want to do? You've been doing this so long, my friend. Are there places and people that you want to work with, places you want to go to, things that you also want to still delve into? I mean, you've done so much and continue to, John. Well, I think <coughs> we already have our next album uh, ready to go. So I'm anxious. Even though we just have this new one coming out now, I'm already done with all the other songs for the next album. So we're looking forward to coming back to Nashville and doing that, doing more shows. Um, you know, I, I I haven't talked to Pepper about it, but I, I thought, you know, we used to do a lot of acting in in L.A. Pepper done, has done a lot of movies and things as well. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun maybe to... Uh, Open up a little theater or something. Mm, it's some, I like some that. acting out here, or uh, you know, getting involved in a little bit in, in that arena again. You know, we uh, now that we're doing well in our music because it takes a lot of time. Oh yeah. You know, uh, that's something to explore, to look at. Yeah. You know, cool stuff. But uh, staying in good health is very important. Uh, we've lost this past couple of weeks <coughs> some very. <coughs> <clears throat> very close friends to us died and it makes us stop and appreciate like you know we're older now so we really have to it does stop yeah. you yeah. know because it, it, it happens you know you think about it you know three days from now you could be in the ground someplace i mean it, it's that quick your life it changes that quick yes well, we see it our friends like you know, Pepper called me the other day and said, so-and-so just passed. I said, oh, you're kidding. Oh, my gosh. Lately, it seems like every day there's just so many people that you know, either personally or, or you know, in the celebrity world, entertainment, whatever. It's just, it's been unbelievable. We lost, actually, a dear family friend um, uh, to a, you know, slight bout with cancer, um, Ronnie Spector from the Ronettes. Oh, Ronnie, very, yes, yes. Very yes. close, dear family friend. Uh, I've known her for years and we're very close and with the family and everything. And we just lost her two weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, you have to really savor every moment and and share, as we say, the lovity, uh, because no... Tomorrow is not guaranteed. And, uh, you know, if there's anything we've learned about everything that has gone on with the pandemic and all is that life is short and life is precious and it's to be lived and it's to be celebrated and shared. And I keep saying, I hope that we rise from all of this more loving and empathetic and kinder and uh, more collaborative um, and, because there's been a lot of teachable moments. I mean, you here you are, you're on our show and, and you've just had this bout with the COVID itself. And thank God you're, you're nursing back to health. Um, what through this experience, plus the last two years, have you learned about yourself uh, and some of the teachable moments for you, John? Well, you know, as you get older, but I was always conscious about health. I mean, I always, I was a runner, I, I worked out, uh, I took care of myself. Today, I, I don't eat processed sugars, uh, even though I had an M&M earlier today. <laughs> you had only one? How I had a couple you have? of them. I had a couple, oh, I, had a couple <laughs> I hear some yeah. uh, laughing in the background. I think that's part of the recovery though. You know, your body says, please let me have some sugar. Yeah, you know, once in a while, exactly yeah. right. 
Yeah. But that changed my life considerably, staying off sugar. More you know? energy, more stamina. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I, we can go all day. I mean, we're busy. We go, 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 go. From the time we get up yeah. in the morning, going all day, energy, until at night when we sit in front of the TV and relax. Yes. And a lot of it is health, staying away yes. from processed foods, things yeah. like that. You know, um, and when you have that energy, you feel youthfulness. You feel youthful. You, you feel like you can get a lot of things done. And we do a lot of things. One thing about what we do is we learn how to do what we need to do. And, and if we can't do it, we'll hire somebody. But yeah. we need to learn how to do it and know something about it. Whatever yes. it is, like you know, today uh, she said, "Well, we're going to do this, uh, uh, do this live broadcast on this particular program." So my first thing was this morning is I got online and I started learning about the program. How do I learn a screen yard? Screen yard or to be able to like do, that. yeah. I learn what I can about it. I want to know what how it works and everything. But I'm that way about everything. If we're going to do you something, are. I want to learn about it so that we have an idea of how to make it happen. Yes. So you're a lifelong learner. You're always like I yes. am. I, you're always learning uh, and always open and willing to soak up uh, new information and new experiences, which I think is great. And then pay it forward. Yeah. And that's the other thing is how to share your time with other people. We, you know, we love people that come to the ranch. We love it when they come and stay, you know, uh, we have people that come and stay for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. We had somebody stay for four months one time. You know, um, they just get out here and they don't want to leave. And and yes. we love that. I mean, we have room for people. You know, uh, we have a big house and uh, they can stay in the house, the teepee or the, in the back. I have a music studio. And we have a trailer back there. We have room for people, you know. Yeah. In the summertime, we have a lot of friends and they come they hang up by the pool. It's, it's like being at a little resort. Yeah. Yeah. And Jim, you should come <coughs> bring, <coughs> bring somebody. Absolutely. And I've been to Pahrump when I was on the television shoot interviewing the oil painter, uh, Dorothy Slicker, who was there. And that's that was the place where I launched on that life-changing, alone, unrehearsed uh, journey into Death Valley myself in a rental car. And it was extraordinary. And Pahrump was that pivotal place, Pahrump, Nevada. And isn't, um, there's a radio series, George Nori or Art Bell. I Art mean, Bell. Art came Bell. from Pahrump, Nevada, right? Art Bell. Cause yeah, he's I, passed, passed away. He passed away because the radio station, one of the iHeart radio stations, Clear Channel stations, I've done a show on for years at night has always had Art Bell on. And now I believe it's George Norrie, but Art from Pahrump, Nevada. And that's when I first heard of Pahrump. And then when they said, we're flying you out from the East Coast to Las Vegas, Jim, and uh, the oil painter, you're going to be spotlighting on this television news program that I do in New York. Uh, with my co-host Doug Llewellyn, who hosts the People's Court, actually. And uh, they said, you're going to this town called Pahrump, Nevada. Uh -huh. I'm like, Pahrump, Nevada? Where is that? Where is... Uh... And, and it was it was cool. There was a great barbecue restaurant that we did go to, that they wanted to go to, the uh, yeah. Dorothy and her husband, and it was delicious. And, well, people uh, are nice here. I mean, if you are pulled over to the side of the road, people will stop. They'll actually stop. Yeah, they'll stop and they'll say you need help. What you was know? it about Pahrump that brought you there initially? Well, we were uh, looking. We owned <coughs> we owned <coughs> income property here. You had about property, years yeah. ago, and when we were in LA, paper said I want to leave LA when yeah. my folks died. Yeah, and she said I'll move anywhere you want, but not Pahrump. I don't want to go to Pahrump. And so, <laughs> so anywhere okay. but Pahrump. <laughs> yeah. So we looked around and we went different places and up north and uh, uh, California and uh, didn't find anything. And then one day she said, I think I found a place. It's a, it's a ranch. And I go, oh, fine. She goes, but it's in Pahrump. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. And, yeah. and she said, well, I want to drive out there this weekend. And so she called a real estate agent. She says, I want you to meet me at the, at the ranch and bring some 
uh, papers to sign. And I said, you haven't even seen the ranch yet. She said, I know, it, but I think I want it. And so we came out here and, and we signed the papers. And it was a rundown ranch. It, it needed work. But we felt there's something special about this place. Uh, and, and of course, with all her hard work, transformed it into a, a really nice little resort for us. How does that area, being in Pahrump, being in sort of that desert atmosphere, inspire your music? I can sit at different locations one place on the property and I can look at Mount Charleston. It's like being in Colorado. Yeah. You know, and it's just the beauty of it. I can I go on another part of the ranch and sit there and open the doors and I'm, I'm seeing all these trees and, and the desert and, and it's just inspiring. But you right. know what? If you want to uh, concentrate on something, you have to take away all the distractions. Yes. LA yeah. was too distracting. There was too many things going on. We lived in a beautiful home and we had all these friends. Nobody knocked. Everybody just walked in the door, which was fine. You know, but it was a busy place. You know, yeah. we had a, all the people from the industry that would come to the house and it, we loved it. We had parties. Yeah. It, sure. But it was distracting. But distracting, right. Out yeah. here, it's quiet. Yeah. It's not distracting. It's peaceful. Even peaceful. when we have a lot of people here, Everybody takes their own space to, to calm down. Um, and that's what I think we needed, I needed, is to have that calmness, being able to uh, just not have any distractions and not that, it's that, that noise that in, in, in invades your body all the time. And when you're in a city, out here it's so quiet. You just hear the breeze of the wind. Yeah. It's the best. Absolutely. Yeah. Very blessed that you are, that you are there. Um, and, you know, when you come out, whether you or whoever, you know, we try to make contact with people, say, come out and, and be with us. Enjoy us. Is absolutely. there something that we can do to help you along yeah. the way? What is it that we can do for you? Yes. You know, because we don't need you to do anything for us. Except, you know, be here and, and let us know what you need. Because yeah. we, it's in our power. We know somebody or we have connections to, then we will help you. Then we will make that, that bridge to where you want to go. And that's what we enjoy doing. That's what we want to do. Absolutely. You uh, know, so and that's with anybody. So do you need help? What do yeah. you need? You right. Know? That's beautiful. It's a beautiful way to to live and to be, and uh, and that's been a running theme here with our conversation on the show. I, I want to let our audience know too if they missed anything or they'd like to see this episode again. You can see it exclusively right here yeah. on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. All of our episodes are available twenty four seven, exclusively on our YouTube channel. Make sure you. Uh, Check it out and binge watch 630 other episodes that we have done day in and day out, including this fantastic one with our very special guest joining us, uh, John Michael Ferrari, uh, multi-award winning singer, songwriter, composer, arranger, definitely a JMS lovity and has already been designated by our audience as one of our Gym Master Show Lovities and Pepper J is as well. <laughs> I, I tell you, uh, John, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, and you definitely enjoyed <laughs> the time with me as much as I certainly have with you, my friend. Oh, this has been terrific. You know, I'm glad we weren't on any time schedule because you know we can yeah, sit we and just, talk. And, we let it know? roll, conversational, warm. I don't, uh, no prescripted questions. Uh, it's not even like a typical interview. It's like a conversation and the viewers yeah. have been commenting throughout. And uh, like Maureen in Arizona says, this has been a fabulous evening. Thank you, John, for the wonderful entertainment, sending prayers that you're better soon. She's in Arizona. Jen in Pennsylvania says, I'm so thankful to Jim and the guest. We get to actually talk and hear the guest. So Zen, thank you. And that's Zen Jen in Pennsylvania as well. Christine well, Clifton. You know, drop, us, drop us a line. I mean, yeah. out there. It's you know, all out get there. Get a hold of Pepper, Stay. say hi. 
Stay connected. Christine in uh, North Carolina says, John, thanks for playing live for us. Fantastic music. Terrific conversation. Thanks for your service. Glad to hear you're doing better and recovering. Keep playing and love it. From Christine, she is in uh, North Carolina. Jane's watching. A lot of people out there. Oh, we have a huge audience. Uh, and these are folks that are watching and commenting live. And then we have a lot of folks that watch this later um, who just quietly watch in the archives. And we love them yeah. too. Jane's watching in Sweden. And she Whoa. says, thanks, Jim, for having this sweet, humble man on the show. And thanks, John, for being here and sharing your music and story with us. And uh, prayers for you to get better soon. We we Thank love you. that. Yeah, yeah we can get all these people together. You know, we can yeah. form a band. We can form a band. Yes, the JMS Lovities. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's and and you help each other. You know, yes. like, that's that's how you get to where you want to go. You, you don't do that's, it by yourself. You do it by right. the love and the help of other people. I agree 100%. And that's what we're all about, my friend. And somebody that just wanted to say he thoroughly enjoyed himself tonight, Mr. George Burns in the house. Oh, George. <laughs> George. There he is. He said, you knocked it out of the park, John. He loved every bit of it. And he loved your uh, performance as well. <laughs> at, at 98 years old, he, they asked him, they said, why are you still working? He says, I got to support my parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly we always show him towards the end uh, this was terrific my friend again i i hope you enjoy the time with me as much as i have certainly with you thank you thank you it's been a lot of fun jim thank you uh you know you're a big superstar and thank you for taking the time out and having me on your on your show uh the pleasure and honor is all mine you be well my friend well as we always say we'll keep the porch light on for you hopefully we'll uh if I'm there back in the, the Vegas area or you're out here on the East Coast, we'll definitely get together and break bread. Thank Pepper for us as well. And we'll chat with her. And uh, and again, thanks for all the time. I know you're still on the mend and, and healing from everything. So I really appreciate you're a real sport coming on and, and even singing. That means you're really passionate. And we, uh. we thank you so much for uh taking the time to be with us. Maggie, Maggie says, love you, John, and give Thank Pepper you. a big hug for me. See you soon. Absolutely. Thank you all those people out there watching, you know, sitting there by yourself or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. Christine says, maybe you guys should, we're putting together a Lovity, a Gym Master Show, Lovity Cruise uh, in 2023 to Bermuda. And she says, oh, we should have them come on the Lovity Cruise and we'll be yeah. all together. That would be cool. Uh, you take care of yourself, okay? And thank Pepper for us. And uh, spread the word about our show. We would absolutely love that. It, uh, and what, it takes a village. The metaverse. Yes, the metaverse. That's yeah. right, exactly. That's very important. And there it is again, sansar.com. So check that out, gang. That's coming up. And again, uh, spread the word about our show. It takes a village, doesn't it, John? It takes a village. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's it. You be well, my friend. You take care. Jen says, uh, sending you continuous healing energies as well. And we all do, my friend. Thanks for being with us, John. You're the best. You take care now, okay? Thank you, Jim. Thank all you. right. Cheers. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. John Michael Ferrari, gracing our presence here on the Gym Masters Show Live. We're so happy he was able to be with us. Again, I had mentioned uh, he was going to be with us last week, but... Uh, COVID came and knocked on the door there. So he's uh, in recovery and doing quite well. And we thank him for, uh, for joining us under those circumstances. And he sang for us too, which was so very cool. He's been doing this for a long time, gang. And um, I thank him for his kind words about our show. And, um, you know, we just thank him for spending all this time with us and sharing the experience of his life with us here on the Gym Master Show live as well. You got to hear him sing. You heard a little bit more about his experiences, his passions, upcoming projects. That's what we do here at the Gym Master Show live and to Team at Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We appreciate John Michael Ferrari for joining us here. A real pleasure. Again, don't forget to check him out in the metaverse, as we mentioned as well. And we're all excited about that. Hey, we've got another incredible legendary person. Marston Smith is joining us tomorrow. Lord of the cello, award-winning, extraordinary cellist. And also he played Sarek 
in Star Trek, The Next Generation. He's all excited. He's going to be playing live for us. We've got lots of music, extraordinary conversation. This is another legend in the industry joining us. We look forward to Marston joining us on the show, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Scott Evan Davis is here, We're going to be talking about upcoming concerts and other great things, multi-award winning composer and lyricist. And then we have on Friday, my buddy, actor, film producer. Matter of fact, he just had another fabulous Hollywood movie premiere with another movie he just released. He also played Frank Meltzer on Gossip Girl. That's right. David Gear is going to be with us on Friday, Saturday from Celtic Woman. Violinist extraordinaire, fiddler, singer, and harpist Tara McNeil is going to be with us. Very excited about that. Yeah. Coming up in February, George Hutton is going to be with us for a return visit. Irish singer and songwriter, lyric tenor. You know who's also joining us next week? Legendary game show host, Wink Martindale. Yes. He and his wife are going to be joining us. We're very excited about that. One of your favorite guests is returning. Kathy Garver, yes, who played Sissy on Family Affair. This will be her third visit live here on the Gym Master Show Live. She's all excited. She's going to be coming up uh, before you know it. And, and we've got a lot of guests coming. Loretta LaRoche is going to make us laugh coming on February 20th. And so much more. Really, really beautiful stuff. We we always have a good time together here on the show, gang. We really, really do. And uh, it's such an honor to have all of you here with us. Don't forget to subscribe. I know we say that often, but it really does help us when you click that red button. There's no cost for that. That just lets us know that you enjoy what we're doing and you enjoy this unique, special series we call The Gym Masters Show. <laughs> How convenient that is, huh? Uh, and don't forget to click that notification bell as well. Really important because that way there, you'll be uh, notified. You get a little alert is what happens when you click that notification bell. It's that little bell icon that you see on the YouTube channel. When you click that, you'll be notified when we have all these special shows and we do special times and we do double lovety days and host chats and uh, special guests and all kinds of things that we do. And if you loved this episode, Give it a thumbs up on the YouTube channel. Right now, you can actually see it on the episode. There's a little thumbs up icon. Give it a thumbs up. That really helps us big time as well. Many of you ask, how can we help spread the word and, and support the show? That helps us too. And leave a comment on the actual YouTube channel underneath the episodes. That helps us too. And we love those of you who have been doing it. Many of you have been doing that religiously. And we thank you so very, very much. So make sure you do that as well. That's really, really something special. All right, gang. This was very, very cool. I hope you guys have had a good day today. A very, very busy day here as usual. Uh, with my TV and radio work, and uh, we're writing a lot of scripts and doing a lot of productions and got a lot of TV shoots that are uh, in the offing, so we're getting prepared for a lot of that too, uh, which is great. Uh, life is starting to return a little bit for everybody, and I hope wherever you're watching around the world that uh, things are good for you wherever you're watching. Our show comes from the United States, but we love everybody who watches across from the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, New Zealand. You guys are really, really amazing. And John says, I love that. That's double lovity. Not only is he a guest, he's also a viewer of our show. Thank you, Jim. John, my pleasure. And Pepper as well. The pleasure is all mine, my friend. Christine Clifton, let's check in with some of our lovity viewers have to say before we wrap up. Again, this is a very interactive show. We bring our viewers into the mix. So if you like that, uh, continue to join us. And again, if you ever miss our shows live or you like to watch, but you're not too big about commenting live, don't worry about that. Just kick back, watch and enjoy, subscribe to the channel and maybe leave a quick comment on our YouTube channel for us to let us know you're enjoying. Jim Lord of the Cello sounds wonderful. Great guest lineups as usual. See you all soon. Good night, Jim and lovely friends. Hugs to all. Great show with John. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, sending lovely to your mom there in North Carolina. Hope she's doing well. 
And uh, we're going to put together another uh, Lovity chat show. I know you guys, and that's something very special. Not a lot of shows do that, where I, as the host and producer, actually have a show that we build where we're chatting live back and forth with our viewers. And it's just us talking about what's going on in our day and life and food and family and, and, uh, inspiration and craziness of life so we're going to be we're overdue we've had so many of these great shows uh night after night that we're overdue to do one of those so we're going to be building another one of those for you guys and uh, we can't wait so stay tuned for that maureen we love maureen lovely maureen watching in arizona she says i just want to let everyone know how i treasure being with you each night and jim a huge thank you for creating such a warm, loving family that I am honored to be a part of. Lovely hugs. Maureen, thank you very much. That is absolutely beautiful. I'm still trying to find a way that we can print these out. I'd like to put these in my broadcast career scrapbook. You guys say some really beautiful things about our series on the air live, off the air, comments on a YouTube channel, uh, mentions on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Jim Masters TV. You guys are really very, very kind. And we thank you for that. Jen Barry says, Jim, I'm humbled and thank you for yourself and you bringing us all your guests we might not ever get to see and talk to. Thank you very much. That, you know, that is one thing that we do do <laughs> is uh, as best as we can, because sometimes it gets crazy and busy. We try to bring you guys into the mix as well, which is rare. Not a lot of people do that. Or they'll just do maybe one or two, but we really like to, uh, you know, to make it interactive as much as we can. So this was terrific. This was interactive. This was fun. This was a lot of lovity. And again, uh, we love having all of you here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Whether you're watching us live or you'll watch this in the archives, we thank you very much for your viewership, your support of the show. Of course, if you uh, looking for ways to support the show when we're on live with the super chat. In chat, you can do super chat, super emoji, super stickers. That helps support us. Or after the show, you'll see a little icon on the YouTube channel underneath each episode. It's a little heart icon and it says thanks. And you click that and that helps uh, support us as well. All the costs uh, involved in production and airtime and everything that we do here. So really, really nice and uh, good stuff. Yes, maybe a host chat show around Valentine's Day for the celebration of Love it that, I think that's a really good idea. Good idea, Christine. I love that. And Jane in Sweden says, good night, Jim, and all love it -ies. Love it -ies. Love it are those who watch all the time. They're faithful. And again, if you're joining us for the first time, you, you keep hearing this word, love it -y. What the heck is that? Again, I know I've said this multiple times, so for some it may sound like a broken record, but we're always getting new viewers. So it's something special and unique to our series. Our guests love it. Our viewers love it. About a year or so ago, I was saying the show has a lot of light, love, and levity, and I said that too fast, and I said the word levity. And then we actually took a poll with our viewers, and we said, look, you know, how should we spell the word levity? Should we do L-O-V-E-I-T-Y, or should we drop the E? Grammatically, the E shouldn't really be in it, so they say. And everybody says, look, we're in a pandemic. Keep the E. Don't ruin the word love. So L-O-V-E-I-T-Y is what it is all about here at uh, the Gym Master Show Live. Jane in Sweden. Good night, Jim and all lovities. It is evening for us here, and it's late for uh, where Jane watches in Sweden, but she's always here. Kathleen Walker, this show, the interaction, and the lovity is priceless. Kathleen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, I got your information, and congratulations on all the new exciting things that are happening in your life. We're going to have to get together and celebrate. Um, I think there's another snowstorm headed our way in the Northeast on Friday. Rain Thursday, then ice, and then snow Friday. But we'll have to get together and celebrate uh, some cool things that are happening here and cool things that are happening for you there. And we celebrate all of you. Uh, we really, really do. We celebrate all of you. So this is your host, Jim Masters. Always loving here, uh, the time with all of you. I will be here tomorrow, uh, and I hope you're here as well. And if you want to follow us, right there on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. You could also follow me on other social media platforms, 
uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jim Masters TV. And we also have the uh, Facebook group for this show, the Jim Masters Show, uh, Lovety Hall. They call this, uh, the viewers call this Lovety Hall. <laughs> and we love that. Good stuff. All right, gang. Thanks for all the great interaction, the comedy, and the comments. And we love it. We'll see you on the next one. Okay. We'll be here, right here in this host chair on our JMS Lovety Hall set, waiting for all of you. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching this live, you know, watching this later on, because uh, we archive all the shows, stay right there. Another incredible episode of the Gym Master Show Live comes right up. And don't forget, there's like 600 plus you can go back in time and binge watch. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that we've done that you can enjoy. Catch you next time. All right, gang. We love you all. Be well. Take care. And cheers.